Big thank you to all the organizers of Rock for Jesus for bringing us together and also to all the participants and to all of you who are listening in. Let us continue to place ourselves in the presence of God and to experience his presence in our midst. I shall be speaking today of marriage and also touching about aspects of marriage during the time of COVID-19. Marriage is a coming together of not just two persons, but of two families, of two cultures, two societies. It is the coming together of two worldviews of each of the persons that commits to the marriage. And more importantly, it is the bringing of Jesus into the marriage. An important key phrase here is commits to the marriage. If there is no desire to commit to the marriage, the marriage will not work. Commitment makes the marriage work. A wedding day may just happen. I know you will say, oh, there's lots of planning that goes into it, months of preparation and a lot of money. But it happens. It's just an event. That's all. But it can be more than just an event. It can be the beautiful start to an even more beautiful journey that you make together. But that must be wanted badly for both the persons involved. So badly that they are willing to risk everything to make this adventure of their life together work. We are still here talking about intention of wanting, of longing, of desiring. Saint Ignatius of Loyola speaks so much of desire. You must want it. You must pray about it night and day. And he goes one step further, which is good advice for couples. If you do not as yet desire it, pray to God for the desire to desire. And of course, Jesus has told us about it. Where a man's heart is, there lies his treasure. So this is the first part, intention. The second part is, you guessed right, practice. You practice what you desire. If I desire to be a loving husband or a loving wife or a loving person, I practice love. Day in and day out, morning and evening. And even though it might sound tough, it's not that tough if you have the first thing, and that is desire. Let us go back to any skill that you learned when you grew up. Maybe it was to play football well, maybe it was to play chess well, or maybe it was to play the piano well. And you kept practicing, practicing, practicing. Sometimes even after the game was over, you would be there alone on the field trying to get that ball into the goal. And it was not a chore. You loved doing it. In this sense, then, marriage is called a science. You do the right steps in the chemistry experiment and you will get a product most of the time. And that is why marriage is also called an art. Just by following the recipe from your mother's cookbook does not mean that you will prepare it as well as your mother did. Yes, marriage is both a science and an art. One of the pointers given sometimes for a successful marriage is that it has to be 50-50. Each partner must invest 50% in the marriage for it to work. Right? No. Wrong. For the marriage to work, each partner has to contribute his or her own 100%. If you are not going to put in your 100%, then there is likely to be trouble. If you follow the 50-50 rule, you will be spending at least half an hour at the end of the day tallying accounts. The husband might say, you took the children to soccer practice and I did the cooking. Or he might say, you did the shopping and I did the dishes. You did this and I did that. As it is, it is so difficult to keep financial accounts to, together in a marriage. 
What about the other counts that we would try to keep if we were to make it 50-50? No, my dear friends, marriage is 100% and sometimes more than that. The third part to this is surrender. So I P S. Intention, practice and surrender. Surrender to the surprises that marriage brings, the mystery of the person who is your spouse and the mystery of the children. A lot of what I have said is summed up in this beautiful song, The Story and Glory of Love, which I have modified so that it applies not just to couples, but to everyone and so that we can sing it in church Gotta give a little, share a little, I let your poor heart break a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. You've gotta laugh a little, cry a little, until the clouds roll by a little. That's the story of, that is the glory of life. Give a little, give a little, give a little love. Give a little, give a little, give a little love. Give a little, you'll get back, get back more than that. That's the story of, that is the glory of life. Gotta win a little, lose a little, and always have those blues a little. That's the story of, that is the glory of life. Give a little, give a little, give a little love. Give a little, give a little, give a little love. Give a little, you'll get back. Get back more than that That's the story of That is the glory of That's the story of That is the glory of Love How does a marriage survive during this lockdown, during this COVID-19? Let us not fool ourselves the lockdown is going to have an effect on all of us. And if you would like to plan ahead, I would like to invite you to have a look at my YouTube channel, Father Roy Pereira SJ, where I have a video titled COVID-19, The Road Ahead, Facts from Medicine, Science and Psychology, Part 1 and Part 2. Most of us have been in the lockdown for nearly three months. And I'm sure most of us are faring much better than all the migrants that had to leave the cities and all the poor in the slums. But even then, we too face problems. Families are forced to live in a confined space 24 seven. Earlier there would be office time, school time, where there would be some time apart. But in this situation, this is not possible. I do know, of course, some families who have enjoyed the lockdown because there is less of this rushing to reach the children for soccer, rushing to reach the children for school. There is more time at home. But for many, there is also the fact of being together in one space and not having our normal relief mechanisms where we would go out, play, meet friends, meet office colleagues, etc. So the first point I'd like to invite you to do as couples is to carve out just 10 minutes out of your daily schedule to sit with each other and share with each other. The first thing you could share is, what are the things I am grateful for today? And after each of you has spent time answering that question, the next point of the sharing would be, what do I need 
healing for or healing from today's life. And you go through the challenges that you face and if you're comfortable, share it with your spouse. The second invitation is to keep at least 10 minutes for your own personal, personal time and space. I know you may not get your own space that you'd like, but at least you can claim 10 minutes for yourself and yourself only. And it is not being selfish. It is not taking time away from the family. It is time taken away so that you can better serve the family. But you need to re rejuvenate yourself. You need to refresh yourself. You need to recover so that you will be of better service to them. And this could be done by just sitting in a corner and praying or giving thanks or just meditating on your breath, which is closely connected to the spirit. For more guidance on the Holy Spirit prayer and what I call the Holy Spirit Rosary, I have a three minute video on YouTube. My final point here is based on the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 715. All of us know that. I do not do what I want to do. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. Each of us has experienced a kind of duality within us. We may call it our strengths and our weakness, the bright side and the shadow side of our lives, the yin and the yang. We all experience being Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And our life's journey is not getting rid of one side, but bringing these into a harmonious whole. So in a marriage, there are actually four entities at play between the two persons. When the bright side of each one is interacting, that is heaven. And when the shadow side of each one is playing out, that becomes hell. And sometimes when the shadow side of one person is being expressed, it is wise for the partner to bring out his or her own bright side. When we understand all the dynamics going on within us and to some extent within our partner, then we will be able to sail through the storms of marriage and emerge victorious. Let me end with the story of Michelangelo and his painting of the Last Supper. He looked around the city to find who would model all the disciples. And after painting about four of the disciples, he found the perfect paint person to paint as Jesus. And he was happy with the result. And then he went on to paint the other disciples. But for a long time, he could not find the person who he could paint as Judas. He shelved the project and carried on with his other work. After 11 years, he suddenly saw someone in the street who would look perfect as Judas. He invited him into his house and began painting him. The man being painted as Jesus suddenly started crying. Michelangelo was shocked and went up to him and said, have I done something wrong? And the man replied, no. I just want to tell you that 11 years back, you painted me. I was your Jesus. Within each one of us are flowers and weeds, that which we water more and tend more and cultivate more will flourish more. I'd like to pray for all of us and for a speedy end to the coronavirus. May God bless each and every one of you. I'd like to end with this little song. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. Reach out and touch him and say that I love him. Open my ears, Lord. Teach me to listen. Oh,
open my heart, Lord. I want to love Jesus. Together as a community, open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Reach out and touch him and say that we love him. Open my ears, Lord, teach us to listen. Open our We want to love Jesus.